Unfortunately, had to come to the persistent attacks of a 424 flu virus going down 3 0 at home. Speak up. What do you say? Pardon? Come in, Bob. Hello. Hello. I was just saying, okay, I was sorry I was ill and couldn't be there with you. So, wearing the number 12 shirt for Whistle Test was Mike Appleton as he meets up with Robert Plant and Led Zeppelin's manager Peter Grant somewhere on the River Thames. Well, at last it's happening. The Led Zeppelin film is going to appear before our very eyes. The rumours seem to have been flying around for me for years. How, how long, in fact, is it since you started making it? Uh, I think the, the evening in question was in July 1973. So that's what? Three years ago? Yeah, yeah. just gone. That's, that's quite a long time. What was the hold-up? What caused the delay in between? I know there's a, it's a complex film, there's a lot in it, but it's quite a long time, three well, years. Well, there wasn't any hold-up in the concert part of it. Uh, and there hasn't been any hold-up. I mean, the time between 73, or the end, uh, end of July 73, when it was filmed at Madison Square Garden, concert part, the rest has been taken up by doing um, all the uh, fantasy and off-stage parts. That's yeah. where it is. In effect, it was it was finished uh, just just to the, this side of last Christmas. But um, to get up to that point, if you really want to if you really want to look at the thing in a, in a it's the best light, then like an album, uh, as the time it took with physical graffiti, you can't really spend you know, countless hours, 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 going through reel upon reel of tape, you know, our film writer. Right. So uh, we just approached it when we were, you know, just kept the freshness there. And it was the same attitude as I would take with an album, to get it as near perfect as possible. That's yeah. why. I mean, it, although it was done three years ago, and obviously didn't have anything from physical graffiti and all from presence, I, I didn't feel that, that I was looking at an old concert. I mean, it looked like a contemporary concert to me. Do you tend to use much of physical graffiti in presence now? Or well, we haven't you, had an opportunity. Will you with presence and did we, you with physical graffiti? Yeah, as we haven't had an opportunity with presence yet, there are a couple of things that I think that we'll work on. But uh, with graffiti, if you came to Earl's Court or if any of the 90-odd thousand folk who did would know that we included a fair portion of, uh, of physical graffiti, you know? But, um, I think it, the vibe has changed just slightly, but the excitement is still maintained. I, I'm, I've been trying to think of a word to describe the film for, for somebody who hasn't seen it. That rock fantasy isn't really an adequate word. I don't like it very much, and I'm sure you don't. No. How, how would you actually describe the film to somebody who knows nothing about it but knows well, about it? Is, it isn't rock fantasy. I think the main thing was to get over the fact that it just wasn't a film of a concert. I mean, there's been lots of sort of, well, not lots, but there's been quite a few films that have just been of concerts on the stage, and we wanted to get beyond that. Yeah, yeah if we're going to be self-indulgent, we might as well try and expand our indulgence a little bit, you know? I mean, the self-indulgence being the fantasy section, uh, were you each individually in charge of your own sequence of fantasy? You totally in charge? It had to be total control, because really you've worked out a, um, or well, you planned out how you would like, to, in my own case, how I really saw uh, what I was doing on a, you know, on, just a, on, a, on another level altogether, you know? The journey, the fact that there are pitfalls and there are um, trials, tribulations, and elations, and the end should never, ever be in sight. So they were entirely the own, uh, you know, their own individual ideas, for instance, with Robert, like when Robert we did his stuff in Wales, uh, the other members of the group were not there, you know? And, the same and refused Jimmy. to pay for it at all. <laughs> and uh, well, we have plans for that later, actually. Wait till he sees his next royalty statement. Oh, I forgot, he doesn't get me. Sorry. <laughs> How did you work with the director? Presumably you, you had a lot of ideas. Obviously you did in your fantasy sequences. Presumably you did for, for, the, for the stuff on stage. How did you actually work with him? How much were you in charge and how much was he in charge? Or was it a cooperative? They were totally in charge. Uh, the artistic thing of how Robert wanted, or Jimmy, or John Paul Jones, or John Bonham wanted to see. They had a picture in their mind of what they wanted to see. That was a matter of having the director shoot what was in their mind, you know? 
Did you be a cross and technician, mechanic, whatever you'd like to say? And then it was up to... Well, so long as he did that, then it was up to us afterwards to, to sort of get together and correlate with him and say, right, now this is, this is the... This should be illuminated. Now this is where you've got to really pull, you know, this is where you've got to do your stuff, you know, because we know exactly what part, of having lived with it forever and, and, and conceived it, we know exactly what parts need highlighting and... And, uh, and he was, in a way, working somewhat in the dark, although he could see that there was a picture and there was substance there, you know? I mean, we knew what parts had to be highlighted. And, and so we had to work constantly. Did you script it for him, or no. did you oh, do no. it by word of mouth? I mean, it, did you sort of discuss it and say, well, we'll do this? No, it all started in the Sheraton Hotel in Boston. And uh, everybody's sitting around talking about a film which we talked about some time. A group had talked about it. And somebody said, why don't we make a film, G? So I said, yeah, that's not an idea. Picked the phone up, called London and... Uh, Rented the sharks? Yes, and over they came. It was just like that, you know, it was straight in at the deep end, really. But it worked. I think I it think. worked very well. I like the film very much. I, uh, the one section that I had a slight reservation about uh, was the theft from the hotel sequence, which somehow seemed to, to lift it out of a, a rock concert and a fantasy combination into a, a sort of documentary. But I suppose, in a way, maybe the, doc the rock concert was a documentary and that it happened all on the one day. Well, the, the, the robbery scene could have been a lot heavier, but uh, uh, it could have been a lot heavier, yeah. Could have been another dollar in the same Right, yeah. it could have been a lot less robbed. No, uh, the thing is that the robbery <laughs> did happen at the time of the concert. It was a part of that, that time, that capture, whatever you like to call it. And that's why we just folded it in Gently, it's, just, it's not. It's not very blatant. I mean, did you find it blatant? Uh, well, you see, I, f I did actually find it rather blatant. But not only did I find it slightly away from the feeling of the rest of the film, but it was also in black and white, which accentuated its difference. Yes, but it was newsreel. It was actual which, yeah, it, TV Yeah, it was. Newsreel. But somehow, I, I don't know. It just seemed to me like a wart. I tell you what, if you walk off stage and find out that two hundred and three thousand dollars have gone up the spout. If I walk up on stage and have that, I should just be happy. It'd be pretty relevant, but <laughs> <laughs> it was that was it. It was a day in July, really. Yeah. We just, in fact, that we tried to find a title that would signify the fact that it was That's just right. that, wouldn't yeah. it? You know? yeah. A day in July might have been a good title. Yeah. A bit late in the day to change it. Robert, why did you make the film in the first place? Well, I wouldn't like to think that vanity crept in, but uh, it's it's rather frustrating spending. Uh, now, well, now it's a total of about eight and a half years of playing on stage. And uh, I think the closest we've ever got of seeing ourselves is having a sly peep at the video screen at Earl's Court. You know? So, initially, if it ran to know more than just, you know, turning ourselves on, or at least having a look to see what people came for, you know? That was the initial, uh, you know, idea. And from, and from there on, we just wanted to capture one, one moment in time, you know? I mean, it was... Now it's got to the point it was a while back. You know, the time may come again when we reach a point that we say, right, you know, let's catch let's have a go at this one, let's see how this looks, you know. It's ironical to me as a television producer that it's taken an extract from a commercial cinema film to bring Led Zeppelin back in performance state, back in on to the small screen. What well, you obviously have persevered with a positive line of not appearing on television anywhere in the world, I believe. Why have you why have you particularly done that? It was the only way we could line you up to get any decent time on Old Grey, wasn't it? <laughs> 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 but really, I mean, do you feel that television is, is too limited? In, yes. In, in what area? Well, particularly in sound. With respect, I don't think they have the facilities to record the sound. And in some way, you just cannot capture the magic of Zeppelin. Magic is a much banded word, I know, but you just you just can't. That's why I've always been against doing it. I say television loudspeakers do have certain limitations. Yeah. To me, to put it in words, I, I don't know, but it's, I just don't see it working. It, well, it doesn't work for Led Zeppelin. Well, obviously, the, the major uh, problem for a band is sound, of course it is. Yeah. What, what but I can give you an example. In Earl's Court, if any people saw Earl's Court, went to, the people that went to Earl's Court was around, um, what, 90-odd thousand? Yeah. You know, now then, <clears throat> I think it worked really well myself, the big screen at the back. It looks super. 
you know, people have got really close up things. Now I have that whole thing on cassette, and I put it on a 25 inch screen at home, nothing. It doesn't work. What have you done about the cinemas you're going into? Have you, have you done anything special about the sound there? Oh, uh, you've been very careful on the cinemas. I think there are certain cinemas that can accommodate the, you know, the four track stereo that, that the film is uh, presented in initially. And um, I should imagine that other cinemas in uh, strategic points can be equipped with with the right equipment so oh, that yes. we, can, we can really get, yeah. you know, we can do exactly yeah. what we started out doing, you know. Yeah. Well, to take it, the distributors fall in love with and push it up and down the country all over the place, would this affect live gigs and touring? No, uh, no way. I mean, you would currently tour at the same time as the, as the film is showing? Well, not immediately it comes out. No, but I mean, if it was still showing around the country, <laughs> That wouldn't influence I mean, you. We'll find John Paul Jones in time, you know, maybe. Well, thanks very much for coming along and chatting to us. Uh, uh, maybe great. in five years' time, we'll see it bought up in a package and shown on BBC as a well, television special. Actually, I didn't let them have the television rights. Guesses. <laughs> Foiled again. Thanks, thanks very much thanks indeed, Robert. All right, great. Yeah. great. Get well soon, Bob. Yes. He's lost his voice. Blowing in the wind on the River Thames, Robert Plant and Peter Grant talking with Mike Appleton. And the sequence, and the sequence tonight is the one which impressed me the most when I saw the film, a fantasy sequence. The backcloth, as you'll hear, is dazed and confused as we join Jimmy Page. <laughs> That's an incredible piece of film. Jimmy Page from the new Led Zeppelin movie, The Song Remains the Same, which has its premiere this Thursday at the Warner West End Theatre in London. OK, that almost rounds off tonight's programme. Next week is the Whistle Test Special.